Every June, the Detroit Institute of Ophthalmology puts on a fantastic show, the Eyes on Design Auto Show. In 2002, it was held at the Daimler Chrysler Technology Center in Auburn Hills. In 2003, you'll find it at the General Motors Technology Center at the Warren campus. I'm Scott Isquick. I live in Pepper Pike. I've been collecting cars for over 50 years and I've sort of specialized in the early cars before the First World War, the large, very powerful, fast cars. Uh, this represents the epitome of my collecting. It's a 1911 Mercedes. This is before Mercedes-Benz. And this car is a 10-liter, four-cylinder car. Rear wheels are driven by chains and this car is capable of speeds in excess of 100 miles an hour. And um, the body was built by order from the original owner, Henry Stetson, from the Stetson Hat family. And this body was built by a Frenchman, Henri Laberdet, who also made these wooden type, wooden skiff type bodies on six cars before the First World War. Three French cars, and one Rolls-Royce, this Mercedes, and a Belgian car called the Minerva. The engine in this car is very interesting because it's the beginning of aircraft design. It has four cylinders that are overhead, three valves per cylinder, and it's very interesting because at 60 miles an hour this car is doing 600 revolutions per minute. In keeping with the French body, we have French lights. There's no electricity in this car. The lights are acetylene gas. You, the water goes in a tank that drops on calcium carbide, and perhaps you remember the miners' caps that had the little lights. Those were carbide lights. So these lights make a very bright white flame. The horn is also a French product. Etienne Testa made these variable pitch horns. By that time the fellow you want to have get out of your way has hit you. The body is made out of mahogany, it's triple laminated and held together with 2700 rivets. automakers offered special models that emulated the styling and spirit of these cars but at a more, much more affordable price. The winner is a 1911 Mercedes 90 horsepower Skiff Henri Labourdet. The owner is Mr. B. Scott Isquick from Pepper Pike, Ohio. Congratulations. My name is Ed Schoenthaler, I'm from Oak Brook, Illinois, and this is a 1919 Page. The Page Detroit Company uh, was in Detroit for some years, and uh, they started out, oh, in, the, in right around 1910 or 11, and by the time this car was built, this was the prototype for a new series of cars. They were into performance, and what they wanted to do was uh, set some world speed records. So they made this prototype, which has a lot of unusual features. If you notice, it's a very thin car compared to other cars. And the, uh, uh, what, they, what they did was they, they took their regular engine, bored it out, made it into uh, a larger engine, 
and they put it in this type of body, in this a sporty body. It has a boat tail uh, back end. And this car was the prototype for a series of cars they were coming out with. They also built another one with no fenders, no top, and they used that to race with. And it set the world speed record at Daytona Beach in 1921 with Ralph Mulford at the wheel. Uh, the speed record that they set was 102.83 miles an hour for the uh, uh, mile run. And then they finally did come out in 1921 with a series of 50 automobiles called the, the Daytona Speedster, the Page Daytona Speedster. At that point, uh, evidently they, they didn't have as big a market as they thought for it, but they did continue on building regular cars, touring cars, sedans, open uh, uh, five and six passenger convertibles. But so this this car there, this car exists. The race, the car that they set the world speed record exists. And as far as I know, there are, are three of the original 50 Daytona Speedsters that were production models. This car has um, uh, Westinghouse shock absorbers. As you can see, it's got unusual suspension on it. It has disc wheels, uh, and it has a lot of it has a seat on the side, a mother-in-law seat. So there are a lot of a lot of unusual features. All all of the what you would call the chrome is actually nickel plating, and it has things such as this actually geared. As you can see, when this when the uh, production cars came out, they sold for around four thousand dollars, which was a lot of money in 1921. So, so those are Westinghouse shock absorbers. It's you know it's a form of spring, and you actually pump them up with air, and you can change the pitch of the car for racing and things like that. So if, if you wanted to take, in other words, you could fill this one up, pump it up higher, and it'd lift the right side of the car up, both the front and rear, or you could change the pitch of the car, you know, front higher, back higher, and uh, uh, use it. In those days, there was a lot of road racing and things. You know, that's how they proved their cars were good by racing. And this car has a six-cylinder engine, but it's 344 cubic inches, so it's pretty, it's pretty powerful. This is a golf club compartment, by the way. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and on the other side, there's a seat that folds away. See, so this folds down, this folds on top, goes in just like a drawer. Pull it out, seat up. This is so you don't slide forward. It, we've had a lot of fun with this car. It's, it drives, it, you can cruise all day long at 65 or 70 miles an hour. And like I say, they did set the world speed record at 102.83 miles an hour. I haven't had it up that fast, but it, it's a fast car and a lot of fun. This is a very gorgeous car. This is also a Gordon Burek design. Uh, Mr. Burek worked for Duesenberg Incorporated and uh, uh, after he uh, or before he did the quarter, almost around the same time, he was asked to update the Auburn for 1935. The 34 Auburn was a new car, didn't, uh, didn't go very well at the auto shows. Uh, so Mr. Burig up updated the car for 1935 and um, got rid of the distinctive uh, uh, streamer that came off the hood and onto the belt that was Auburn's trademark. Did a very, did a very beautiful V-shaped front end you can see here. Uh, but that was... Uh, that was in the summer of 1934, uh, uh, this car was, the Auburn was introduced, but for the New York Auto Show in 1935, they needed something a little more spectacular. And they created this, in the, the, this uh, Auburn Speedster, the last in a long line of Auburn Speedsters. Of course, this is a boat tail Speedster. You might ask, why, why should an automobile have a boat tail? Well, I, I think for no other reason, it looks gorgeous and certainly very, very exciting. Uh, what made the Speedster different, of course, was its two-passenger body and very tight, selfish top, and the, the pontoon fenders, which were unique to the Speedster. This car also has the full wheel discs, which uh, you don't often see on Speedsters, but the highly wire wheels. A um, little, little tight in there? A little bit. And it has a, a plaque on the uh, instrument panel that says it's been driven at what? 101.5 miles per hour before shipment. Before shipment, right. Um, I hope that wasn't through the streets of downtown Auburn. It's a beautiful car. Notice the beautiful symmetry of the boat, uh, boat tail and the pontoon fenders. And of course, this is a supercharged car, straight A, straight a so therefore the supercharger pipes come out on only one side, unlike, unlike the V8 Cord. 
But uh, this is this car was built for speed. It was built for no other reason than the fun of driving, and it, it's uh, the fun of driving and the and the uh, the speed is expressed in every contour of its beautiful body. Thank you so much for bringing it. 1931 Chrysler in Imperial Phaeton by LeBaron. And then later, 1917 Locomobile 48. Uh, looks like gun gunboat roadster by Healy. I guess that's yeah, that's what it says there. Uh, one of the things to me that's interesting is there's a seat out here. Yeah. Who the hell they'd get to ride this? I don't know. Nineteen thirty-two Lincoln KB boat tailed speedster by by Halls. I've seen this here before, and one of the things to me that's the most interesting is that silver that's like on that the top one? is uh, stainless steel. What a sleek automobile! It's even it's just a f fascinating. I. Uh, it looks fast, even sitting still. 1930, Stutz Convertible Coupe by LeBaron. 1929, Duesenberg Model J, all-weather cabaret by Durnham. Nineteen twenty seven Bentley Red Label Tour by Von Plus. This is uh, English. It even has a spare gas can here on the fender or on the running boards. Nineteen twenty six Willie's Night Six Sixty Six. Robbins Car Cabaret. Okay. 1934 Packard V12 dual cowl Phaeton. What that means is that the front seat and the back seat both have a windshield. To say that this is a big car is not. It's real close. It's, it's a big car. 1930 Cadillac V16 all-weather Phaeton. 1948 Chrysler Town Limousine. This has a sliding glass between the front and the back seat. My name is Frank Opelka from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, this is a 1937 Elvis, a Speed 25 model. The Elvis company uh, is in England. They made cars from 1921 to 1967. This is their Speed 25 model. It's a, uh, a, a three and a half liter motor. The engine has uh, got a lot of aluminum in it, has three side drift SU carburetors, six cylinders, straight six, overhead valves, and uh, they made a liberal use of aluminum so that it would be as light as possible for better performance. This is a four-door tourer, which is, uh, the body is made, it, made by uh, Cross and Ellis. Uh, as a lot of those companies did back then, they only made the chassis and then they would ship it to uh, your favorite body maker and they would body it for you. This one is by Cross and Ellis, but you could have Charlesworth, you could have any number of different body makers take care of this. It's right hand drive, of course, uh, four speed transmission. It had the first of the all synchro mesh transmission, four speed and uh, quite advanced in its uh, construction and design. 
It's a contemporary of the Bentley, although it's not very well known in the United States. These are the accessory wheel discs on the car. Underneath these covers, there's chrome wire wheels. But these are, I think, uh, add to the attractiveness of the car. Uh, has the P100 Lucas headlights. Also has driving lights, horns, parking lights. And uh, it's a real pleasure to drive. It's a four-door car and uh, very pleasing. My name is Bill Fellian. The car is a 1930 Stutz Model M46, 146 inch or 45 inch wheelbase, straight eight overhead valve, overhead cam. Weighs 5,000 pounds, dry weight. Holds 12 quarts of engine oil, 25 gallons of gasoline, and 24 quarts of coolant in the cooling system. 113 horsepower. To my knowledge, only three of this particular model this year were built, and the other two still exist. I've had the car since 1954. That would be 48 years. Bought it in Syracuse, New York, and drove it to Flint. It was restored in Saginaw by Bill DeReist, the gentleman that owns the Duesenberg. been restored for 26 years. This is 1929 Duesenberg, Model J, long wheelbase, 153 and a half inch wheelbase, and it's J237. It sports a Durham two-passenger town car body of very close proportions inside, one of two made. I am the owner, William Dreist of Saginaw, Michigan. The car has the outside exhausts that were added by the factory in 1933. The car, I've owned the car for about 30 years. It took about 10 years to restore it from a basket case. I drive it mostly at shows. It's trailered to and from shows. Hello, my name is Roy Margano. I'm from Ann Arbor. 
This particular car is a 1934 Bentley three and a half liter drop head coupe with custom coach work by Thrupp and Maberly. The, uh, this car was built in England and originally sold in England. And uh, Thrupp and Maberly made seven cars to this identical body style. And this is one of only two known to exist at this point of time. I bought the car in September of last year, 2001. And so it's a pretty new car for me. But it's a fantastic driving car. It's put about 1,200 miles on it since. And uh, quite a fun car to just get in and, and zip along in. These vehicles were rather high performance vehicles for their era. And uh, this car will keep up pretty easily with modern traffic on the roads, whether it's the highway or city streets. Um, interesting top feature on this car is that it it has uh, what's called three positions. It will You can leave it fully closed or open it halfway as it is here for driving in the city or put the top down completely for open air motoring. It's a three and a half liter inline six cylinder engine uh, with twin carburetors and uh, it produces about 125 horsepower, which is pretty powerful for its day. And a uh, very reliable motor, but very smooth also. My name's Lee Jacobson, I'm from Dearborn, Michigan, and uh, this is a 1939 MG TA Tickford. And MG was uh, uh, started back in the 20s and they were well known for uh, in England for their British sports cars. And uh, this particular model is uh, taken from a TA Roadster. And in 1939 they made 36 of these and it was a uh, model made by Solomons and Sons. Tickford would send the bodies over to them and they would put on a custom coachwork, custom door, uh, and custom interior with all the leather and everything. And um, it was what you would call the, uh, the more elegant style of Tickford, the more elegant MG. You could roll up the windows, put the top all the way here. It's, it was remarkable for its three position top, so the top could be here, this position, or if you wanted to, you could simply break this and then break these uh, Landu irons and this would make it into a convertible just like that. This car has a few options. It has the dual spares, it has the cigarette lighter, it has the uh, uh, all the extra gauges on it, radio, and uh, as you can see it was well decorated, decorated out with uh, British walnut and uh, the hood was lined and I pretty much did all the work on this particular car, so it was a 25-year restoration. It started off and I picked it up in 1977 and uh, it was probably bought over by the World War II vet and it was sitting in a barn in Ohio and uh, as most restorations start off, it needed a, a couple of screws replaced and a year later it was all over the, all over the garage and over the years it just built it back up and this is its first event so it's kind of fun to have it back out. Back then they didn't really have a gas gauge so what they did is on uh, TAs and of that era they had a, ga uh, a little switch and this gas tank on one side it has 10 gallons and on the other side it has three with dual fuel lines so when you ran out of gas you flicked the switch you knew you had three gallons to find a gas station and then you were happy. So. It's kind of fun. This paint is based off of a 1935 PB, uh, originally owned by the granddaughter of the original owner, so I know it's pretty original. And Tickford, an owner, it's a, uh, it's a beautiful restoration for authenticity because the owner could specify any kind of paint, any kind of interior, and that would be okay because all it took was money. <laughs> um, another unique feature is the windshield would open up. Oh, uh -huh. Had little uh, latches. So if you wanted to, you could loosen this up and the windshield just pop right open. Oh. 
in here what they did is they put all their tools and everything they needed there's one tool tray on this side underneath that there'll be the a tire pump jack hammer knockoffs all that type of a thing and here's that double switch here's your twin fuel lines coming in you can switch it off right here this is your windshield wiper motor you have uh, all your fuses are kept in here if you just pop this open you'd see all kinds of uh, the usual British fuses one unique thing about TAs is that all the oiling of the vehicle was done on either side through these nipples and if you look very closely you would squirt your oil can in there and the oil would travel through all these little oil lines to all parts of the car which made it kind of neat uh, Tickford's they had a beautiful body and a beautiful body stuff but when they finally finished it off each Tickford was assigned a, a car number and they just crudely stamped it in aluminum and nailed it on the top of the it just seemed not quite right but that's the way they did it this one uh, has trafficators if you've ever gone to England and see uh, the London taxi cabs and everything there it goes just go like that out it goes <laughs> um, that was another unique thing about MG's is that uh, vibration would actually bring it back so as you're driving down the road vibration would slowly let this drop back down go back in position at least that's the only thing I can figure because after about two minutes of driving it's it's gone by itself so it has roll-up windows so you, what you could do is you could uh, open the door on a Tickford model you could do this there's your window and the top would come over seal everything up and it'll be uh, very weatherproof. In England, that was important for luxury, anyway. But it's been a lot of fun to drive. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks a lot. My name is Hal Smith and I'm from Freeland, Michigan. This is my 40 Ford. It used to be a 40 Ford coupe like this and uh, for the last four and a half years we've been working on it 
It was built by Slim's Body Works in Freeland, Michigan. And uh, the car, uh, first thing that we did was cut the, the top off and make it into a roadster. The uh, car has been sectioned two and a half inches. The windshield has been fabricated. It was uh, laid back at a 45 degree angle. Um, it has 39 uh, Ford headlights uh, Frenched into the fender. The hood has been pie cut so that it's lower in the front than in the back. The running boards have been contoured. Um, it has two door sedan doors which are six inches longer than uh, normal. And uh, 39 Hudson taillights and then the exhaust comes out through the back of the body. The uh, uh, chassis is a TCI and the engine is a uh, small block Chevy. Uh, 383 stroker, dual quads, aluminum heads, puts out just about 400 horsepower. My name is Jim Diamond from Gross Seal, Michigan, which is down river from here in the uh, main part of Detroit. And this particular car we've had about uh, 10 years. Uh, it's a 1941 Chrysler barrel back town and country sedan. And uh, the car was in a very tired condition when we got it. It took us 18, eight years, I should say, to restore. And a lot of research. It's uh, one of 796 that were built in 1941. And there aren't that many that survived because of the Second World War. The uh, color is a polo green, which is an original color offered on the car. The wood is all ash and mahogany and the uh, the interior of course they had three or four colors offered this particular one is tan the roof rack it was an option the probably the radio and the clock and the heater they were options too and one of the most difficult things to find was the good plastic which was on the dashboard I mean, uh, they built six and nine passengers this particular one is a a nine passenger car. I'll show you the back door. This seat it goes back and that one actually folds down and everybody faces forward sitting down. And back here is where the barrel back name comes in. I'll shut this door and it gives it that a look. They call them the clamshell effect on the doors. Uh, the luggage was not offered as original, just one of our add-ons. And the pictures, you just can't see them much. That was the original car. Oh, look at those horns. Now, they offered musical horns as an option back then. It was in their brochure, and I happened to find a set, so we've installed them on this car. But the original, the original is, uh, it, it is the original engine that came with the car. Uh -huh. And what kind of engine is it? Now this is just a straight flat at six. Uh -huh. Now Chrysler Corporation provided with the VIN number, the, the engine numbers and all the numbers and everything matched. Uh -huh. So this is a very original car. And naturally we're proud of it. And it's a, a finished product. Shown here before and it did very, very well. Uh, in fact, they got three different ribbons last year, but uh, they asked for it to come back this year, and I think the main course here being at uh, Chrysler uh, headquarters, which I felt honored that they asked me, and I was very happy to provide. So, good that it's here. Uh, Maurice Cash. I'm from Harbor Beach, Michigan, and we drove the car down this early this morning, 130 miles. Uh, last weekend it was in uh, in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, to a car show, which we drove it to. Uh, the car was originally bought in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It was pretty well equipped the way it is. It had the fog lights in the grill. They weren't by Ford, but they were an aftermarket installed by, by a Ford, the Ford dealer when it was sold. There's a Continental kit on the back which was, was put on at the Ford dealer at the time of the sale. Uh, 
The car's in, in, in very good shape and tra we travel with it a lot. It's a uh, uh, 51, it still has the flathead engine in it. I've rebuilt the engine. Uh, it's just been a very dependable car. It's a ford automatic. It was the uh, first automatic Ford put in a vehicle. Uh, functions perfectly. Nineteen thirty seven Buick Century Sport Coupe. Nineteen thirty four Packard Super Eight Coupe. Nineteen thirty four Hudson Eight. This is a straight eight. LT Cabriolet convertible. Nineteen thirty one Buick Ninety Roadster. This had even deluxe little wing windows. Beautiful car, just beautiful car. 1927 Stutz Blackhawk Speedster. In the back end of the Blackhawk Speedster. Or Stutz was just a fantastic car. 1921 Marmon Wasp Speedster. This isn't as, as uh, deluxe as the uh, boat tail type, but it has a nice covered spare on the back. 1915 Oakland Model 37 Speedster. The back end of the Speedster. This had a little different arrangement here that it used for shocking absorbing on the springs. Nineteen nine simplex. This is before they made everything out of metal. The fenders on this are made out of uh, cloth. Um, got your orders. That's interesting to say the least. Driver controls. All of these things, including the multi-horned blow-by thing here and the, the pump of lubrication there, I think that is. Maybe that's a fuel pump, but those are all driver controls there. Have you had the car? Well, 1977. Oh wow, wow. What's your name and where are you from? Uh, my, my name is Monty Gillespie. It's my wife. Yeah. This is Bob and Mary Elton. My friends from Ann Arbor. We're from uh, South Bend, Indiana. Just oh. outside of South Bend. That's nice. Yeah. So you've had it since uh, you've had it like over 20 years now. So. Yeah. yeah. Born July of '77. But needed a little bit of work. Uh huh. Took it apart in 81, finally got it back together in 92. And, 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 yeah, been enjoying it for the last few years. Now. It's just a beautiful car. Yeah, excellent. Thanks for talking Thank to me. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, my name is Ted McGregor. I'm from Mount Clements, Michigan. I've owned this car for 10 years. The 57 Plymouth was a design that was ahead of its time. It actually, the advertisement said suddenly it was 60. The designer came over to Chrysler that felt that the aerodynamic look and the fins would actually perpetrate more sales to Chrysler, and he was correct. Um, the car itself, this particular car was a special edition. They made 7,500. Of the 7,500, there's roughly 50 left. And in this kind of condition, this is probably one of a kind. It has less than 50,000 miles on it, actually 45,000 miles. And uh, I use it as a driver as well as bringing it to charitable events. I don't do shows, but I, I think the charitable events are the things these cars are valuable for so we can share with our fellow enthusiasts. The color scheme is one color. The interior is one interior. 
The engine is one engine package with is a 318 Y block with the dual quads. There was no other option. You could have simple things like stereo equipment, which is in here, a highway hi-fi, a clock in the steering wheel, and one of the more unique features is a 150 mile an hour speedometer. And I would hate to admit it, but when I had one when I was 17, I saw it hit 150 miles an hour several times. The actual car itself is only 3,400 pounds, uh, very light for the size, and quite stylish for its time. Tell me a little bit about the engine here. Well, in 1957, Chrysler came out with a 318 Y block. This particular block is marine bottom with solid uh, lifters, a forge crank, forge pistons, developing 290 horsepower out of the factory. Two four-barrel carburetors, carters. It was a highly effective top-end car, as well as quite quick through the uh, gears. Three-speed transmission, uh, torque flight. My name is Bob Solvis from Fenton, Michigan. I've owned this 39 Chevrolet for 34 years, getting it from the original owner's brother who uh, had it for four years and only put 50 miles on it during that four years. Because the family was so concerned what was going to happen to this car, it took me over six months to purchase it because they, didn't, they wanted to make sure it was going to a good home and I guess I've given it a good home. Uh, all of the body paint on the car is still original with the striping. The fenders were repainted last fall and I finally had to give in and have the wheels repainted and striped after 62 years. All of the interior including the trunk is original as put in by Fisher Body and uh, except for the three ashtray knobs which were early plastic that uh, finally crumbled but they've been replaced by authentic reproductions. It's a great car, it's a senior winner in the Vintage Chevrolet Club of America and the Antique Automobile Club of America, and even after all these years, still scores high enough to get preservation awards. Uh, in the end of July of uh, 2002, we're heading to central Wisconsin with it by trailer, but when we're in central Wisconsin, we'll be on a week-long tour, putting about approximately 600 miles on the car. It's a lot of fun, and it's a great tour car, and the 39 Chevy had a lot of uh, features the first year of the vacuum shift of which this car doesn't have but uh, it was a ten dollar option and most of them were built with it those are genuine fender lights oh, okay. which have turn signals in them the first uh -huh. first year of optional turn signals on Chevrolet was 1940 uh -huh. but for safety reasons I have turn signals on it uh -huh. it's uh, been a great car to have and and I plan on keeping it as long as I'm around my name is Michael McCoy. This is a 1939 Chevrolet Master Deluxe. This was pretty much a field car when we started. Um, as you can see the stocker in the background, we have the modified one here. There's really not a panel on this car that's stock. The top has been chopped six inches. The front fenders, which are all steel, have all been re-massaged. Uh, the entire hood assembly has been massaged. Running boards, uh, I just, be very hard pressed to find anything on the vehicle that's still stock. Um, it was about a two-year project. Um, it's got a Corvette drivetrain in it, um, Ford nine-inch rear end, and this is primarily a cruiser. This is a great highway car. Uh, the car really doesn't have any bad habits on the highway. Um, it's just a real pleasure to drive. My enjoyment is in the building. When I'm done building, I'm, I'm looking for a new owner. I'm looking for a new project myself. Um, I could show you the interior if you want to take a look. It's all General Motors products. It's a little mix and match. All power seats, um, tilt telescopic wheel. Um, I even have a feature that I really get a kick out of. We even have drink holders for the long haul. Uh, we've got Cadillac rear seats, Oldsmobile Verada front seats. Um, it's just, just a mix to come up with what I consider a, a traditional ride. 
show you our hood here. Now our hood's a little different than the stacker. The stacker was a clamshell that opened uh, two pieces. And what we did is we actually nosed this thing two inches and then I cut the sides loose. This features of this is that you can drive this vehicle without the side curtains. Show off the motor if you want. All the linkage hides out of view when the, roof, when the top is closed. The linkage was probably the most difficult part of all of this. And I think what made this possible is the aircraft time joints. Without 200 degrees of range, we just wouldn't be able to pull this off. Uh, but basically, um, it is a stock driving car. Just a pleasure to drive. Not a real, not a real tire smoker, but get on the highway and we'll go back and forth to California all day. Okay. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Steve Cott. I uh, live here in uh, Wayne, Michigan. Uh, this is my car here. It's a 1961 Pontiac Ventura, two-door hardtop. They call this a bubble top, which of course you can see by the roof line. It has a bubble top appearance. This car <clears throat> is equipped with a uh, 421 Super Duty engine which is uh, very rare. There were only 11 engines made in 1961, engine blocks, and this car is a recipient of one of those blocks. It has uh, dual four barrel carburet carburetors on it. It's got aluminum intake. The bumpers are from GM, they're aluminum. This is lightweight for racing. Uh, I can show you the engine here. There we go here. As you can see, we got two large four barrels on here. The very rare carburetor, they call it a 3010S. Now this car has solid lifters. It's 421 cubic inch. They rated it very conservatively at 368 horsepower. In, in actuality, it's really uh, 405 horsepower at least. Uh, it's got long branch uh, exhaust manifolds with the uh, cutout dump for racing. Like I say, there are only 11 of these engine blocks ever available. And they went to uh, different racers, say like Mickey Thompson. And this particular block did come from his collection. It was never used or had been put into a car. So when this car was built, we made it into what you see here, uh, an example of what Mickey Thompson may have made at that time for racing. In 61, this car uh, won the, uh, the NHR National Drags Nationals at Detroit Dragway. The car is equipped with these eight lug aluminum drum fins. The center part here is actually your drum. It's aluminum, it's got a steel sleeve inside. And uh, it helps cool the, the drum, the uh, brakes a lot more than normal. The interior, that's the interior yes. We got, okay. got a real a nice uh, bucket seats. Of course, we got the four speed Attention, transmission gentlemen. on the floor. With Joel. It's a radio Tempest delete X, car. Please move your truck. Nothing real fancy on the dash. We just With MSX, strictly for racing again. How, what all is original? What all is the uh, the interior is all original except for the carpeting. Wow. The carpeting has been rechanged. But as far as the seats, the side Attention panels, it's all owners. original. You may now exit the field. It's a very fast car. Attention vehicle owners. Very you may desirable. Now exit the field. Thank you. I looked for many years many? before I found this car. Enjoy this car day. is a total frame off restorated car. It was done in uh, Texas, oh, about maybe 10 years ago. And I think you'll find the paint job on it is almost flawless. It's just straight as can be. Real nice body lines to the car. It's very light. We're looking at maybe a little over 3,500 pound car, as opposed to the 1960 Pontiac, was quite larger and heavier. And then when they went into 62, they got 
larger and heavier again, but this is a very light car, very desirable for racing back in 61.